Um, you guys can sign as we go and um, just pass the sign and sheet. I'll make sure I come around. Alright, so good evening. My name is Ms. Hector and I'm the ABS for the elementary department. So for the kindergarten to the fourth grade. So good evening. I'm Ron Madden. I'm the ABS for 6 to 12. Okay, so we're going to do a presentation tonight and Ms. Hector is going to start off. And then I'm going to make sure I get the assignment sheets. Make sure everybody has two of So but welcome to our hip, so it's harassment and intimidation and bullying training. Alright, so for today we're going to start off with some scenarios. I know it's supposed to look here until you guys did the training already. So we're going to start off with some scenarios, see what you guys know. And if you guys do pretty good, then we can see through and then we'll start a little late and then you can like be out of here by Okay. Um, so we're going to go over the definitions of bullying, the detection of the parent, or we're going to go with the culture. Um, we're going to go over the de definition of bullying, um, and a lot of people can confuse that with um, conduct. So we're going to go over that so you guys can know what the difference is between bullying and conflict, uh, prevention of bullying, some tips for parents, and intervention methods. And then again, at the end, we also have some scenarios. And if anybody else has any questions, then we can answer those. Um, All right, so our first scenario. Um, during lunch, Jonathan is told that being a vegetarian is stupid, it's not good to not eat meat. People who eat meat's brains are bigger than those who do not eat meat. Do you guys, you can raise your hand if you want to participate if you think that is bullying or not. Raise your hand if you think it's bullying. Okay, raise your hand if you don't think it's bullying or our consumer, everybody else thinks that it's not bullying. Okay, um, this is actually bullying. Um, this is actually a court case on how they come, so it's vegetarianism, and that is the um, <coughs> characteristic, specific characteristic that the child used to tease another child that vegetarian so that will be bullying for that one. And then we have another scenario, I'll give you guys another try. <laughs> <laughs> On Tuesday, I know you were sent home to all the element all the parents, I'm not gonna leave you guys out, all the parents uh, stating that there had been a case of lice reported in the school. On Thursday, Liza returned back and her hair just happens to be dyed. So Jane told all the students that the reason she dyed her hair is because she was the one with lights. Is this bullying or not bullying? Raise your hand if you think it's bullying. All right. <laughs> and everybody else is not bullying. I see a little bit more tonight. And it's like it's All right, so congratulations. That was bullying. And then the specific characteristic again for that was actually that it was lights. All right, one more try. We're going to do it one more time. So Paul and Jed are involved in a game of four square box ball. So four rectangles and the I don't know if it's something that but it's a game. Um, during recess, Paul feels as though he knocked Jed out of the game, but Jed does not agree. Jed refuses to leave the square, and this causes Paul to become very frustrated with the situation. Paul decides to call Jed a loser. This upsets Jed a great deal, and he turns and calls Paul stupid. Both students become very upset and decide to go tell the teacher. Um, okay, so we're going to see if this is bullying or not bullying. Raise your hand if you believe that this is bullying. About two, three, four. Okay. And so everybody else is not bullying. This is absolutely not bullying. And as we go on further into the slide, this is what we would consider to be conflict between the two students. All right, so now we're going to go over the actual definition for HIP. Um, so any gestures, written, verbal, physical, act, or electronic communication. It can happen one time or it can happen several times. 
So this is a reasonably perceived as being motivated by any actual or perceived characteristic, as we did in the scenario. So the perceived characteristic for one was the lice, and the other one was that the child did not eat meat. Um, or if it's just because somebody's hair is red, and that's the reason, so things like that, and we'll go over a few of those as well. Um, it takes place on school property, any school's function, um, we're going over cyberbullying later, so even to the at home, on your own computer, but it's going to affect the school day here. Um, all of that is still constituted as bullying. Um, and know that also includes a power imbalance between the students, or if it's a group of students against one. Okay. Um, it must substantially disrupt or interfere with the orderly operation of the school or the rights of the students. Um, a reasonable person should know under the circumstances that this will have the effect or physically, emotionally harming a student or damaging a student's property, placing the student in reasonable fear or physical or emotional harm. So in the first scenario when we went over the lights, uh, you would know, a reasonable person would know that by saying to the whole school that this person died in here because they had lights and they had this um, perceived characteristic that that will emotionally affect that student. Um, it creates a hostile educational environment for the student by interfering with the student's education or by severely or pervasively causing physical or emotional harm to that student. Bless the ocean. All right, so we're going to go over the different types of bullying. It's physical, verbal, social, emotional, um, cyberbullying, um, which can be a major one because everybody can have computers, phones, the just stay with that 20 for 7, and just the amount of we'll go over that um, with the cyberbullying. The physical apps, you can, um, sometimes clearly you can see, hitting, uh, biting, uh, verbal, uh, so the lights were still verbal, verbal threats. It uh, was also emotional, um, the vegetarianism, that which was the case, I believe, in Montgomery. Um, township, so that's emotional, letting the children know just because that they don't eat meat that they won't be as smart as someone else. Um, and the cyber bullying, which Mr. Madden will go into further detail. So, how is cyberbullying different? Cyberbullying can happen 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and can reach kids even when, they, when he or she is alone. So that means when they're home, and they're moving on the computers. Um, it can happen any time of the day or night. So when you think they're stupid and they don't on a computer, they could be getting cyberbullied. Cyberbullying messages and images can be posted anonymously and distributed quickly to, to a variety of wide audiences. It can be difficult and sometimes impossible to trace the source. Um, deleting inappropriate or harassing messages, texts, and pictures that seem difficult after they have been posted or sent. So if you know somebody that posted something and they try to get it back, actually Facebook now has did a delete thing, but you can take stuff back. So, but it's still very difficult for most of the social media sites. <coughs> So 43% 40, 40 of teens have been victims of cyberbullying. 81% said other cyberbullying because they think it is funny. Nearly 80% of teens say they do not have the internet rules or have found ways around it. Only 11% of teens discuss cyberbullying with their parents, and that's the source of the National Crime Prevention Council. So, um, as you know, kids don't come home and tell you everything. Um, sometimes you have to probe them, sometimes you have to ask them questions. So if you see any changes in your, in your child, um, they come home depressed one day, um, they're not eating, um, they're not sleeping, um, just ask them what's going on, what happened. Maybe they're a victim of cyberbullying, you just never know. Okay? Next slide. So effects of bullying. Kids who are bullied are more likely to use alcohol and drugs, skip school, be unwilling to attend school, receive poor grades, have low self-esteem, have more health problems. And as you know, if your self-esteem is very low, uh, you try to fit in with various crowds to get validation that can lead to going down the wrong path. So just be aware, if you see your kids cyberbullying, you see the things that could happen to your child. Okay, so it's not just the fact that they're being cyberbullying, it's been for the rest of their lives, okay? That's how I see it. 
So bullying versus conflict. So bullying, the goal is to hurt, harm, or humiliate. Conflict, disagreement or argument in which both parties can express their views. Power imbalance. On the other side, is equal power between those involved. Bullying, continue the behavior when they realize it's hurting someone. On the conflict side, generally stop the behavior when they realize it's hurting somebody. So normally bullying, um, it is a power struggle. Um, some people just like to be in control. So normally you will see that for people who are bullying. Most bullying people, they take advantage of the people that are weak. Um, that's basically what it is. Um, next slide, please. So prevention of bullying. Parents can prevent their children from taking part in bullying or being hurt by victimizing, by being victimized <coughs> by teachers and model resi resilience, teach and model empathy, give feedback in a positive way, talk to your child about safety and conscious use of digital media, talk to your child about legal consequences for behavior on social media, invite your child to share things that worry them. So um, a lot of a lot of even young adults, they put stuff on social media because they think it's a joke. Um, they'll make an inappropriate comment, not knowing that it's affecting somebody else because <laughs> social bullying, I mean, HIV, is based on the perception of the person that's being bullied. So it's not how you put it on there, it's how the person perceives it. So you could put it on as plain, but the other person is perceiving it as being harassed, intimidated, or bullied. So, just try to, um, if you have to talk with your kids, just let them know it's not what you put on, it's how the person perceives it. And that's basically the difference between them. Um, next slide. So, signs that may indicate that a child is being victimized. Loss of withdrawal from friends, more frequent health problems, behavioral changes, poor or deteriorating schoolwork, avoiding school, emotional, angry or upset in online or coming, or coming offline. So as I said before, so these are some of the warning signs. If your kid is not doing what he normally do, let's say your child, your child likes to go play soccer. Now he doesn't want to go play soccer for some reason. Or they like to go to karate class. All of a sudden they don't want to do that anymore. All of these are signs. There's schoolwork going down, grades. Obviously somebody's being bullied does not want to come to school because that's where they're being bullied from. So they're going to try to avoid school. So, that may learn to start to them acting out in school just so they don't have to come. So when they wake up in the morning, time for school, they may act out, pretend that they're sick or something just so they don't have to come to school. Okay? Uh, next slide. So signs that they indicate that a child is involved in bullying others, being secretive and high media use from parents, negative slash hostile expressions during or after using social media. It's quick to get into conflict. Or fights with peers and is quick to blame others. Makes fun of cyberbullying incidents and being friendly with peers who bully others. Old saying, birds of a feather flock together. So most bullies, they're going to be with bullies. Um, most people that don't get bullied, they're probably going to be with kids that don't get bullied. Um, and some kids will actually try to join the bullying side just to get off the other bullying side. So these are just some things to be aware of um, when you talk about. So intervention. If a child is being bullied, parents can block communication with the bully. Teach cyber safety. Save hey. the messages or screenshot. Get an overview of what's wrong. Stress the fact that the aggressor has the problem, not the victim. A lot of victims blame themselves. Create an atmosphere of safety. Help build self-esteem. Report the problems to the school slash local police. So, um, a lot of kids that are bullying bullies, they don't like to report. And they'll come in and they'll say, well, this has been happening for a long time. And they are who's reporting to them. Nobody. So, just try to probe them. They, they're not anxious to report. Because they'll either be ridiculed even more, or, you know, they'll become a target. So, just try to probe your child and try to figure out what's going on. Next slide. So what parents should do if their child is involved in bullying? Create an accurate awareness of what bullying is. 
find out what is causing the bully behavior. Teach skills of empathy at home. Build self-esteem at home. Discuss the rules for responsible internet and computer use, i.e. to be a social contract. Monitor and supervise internet use appropriately. Facilitate energetic children's catharsis, i.e. letting off steam in a positive way. So that basically be sports, it be writing, whatever they like to do. Uh, next slide. So responding to cyberbullying. Save evidence. Email, IM, blog, web pages. Print out all instances plus do not delete any messages received. Try to identify cyberbullying if possible. Ignore, block, or delete them. Calmly and strongly tell them to stop. Stop or remove material. Uh, contact website exec. Uh, contact parents of cyberbullyers. Contact the school. Contact police. So you see a little illustration over there. Mr. Joe, you're fat, ugly, no male love. The pot, please stop. That right there. It's, it's bullying. That's a that's an HIV incident. Only has to be one instance to happen. So right there, that is an HIV incident. Just one time, it just has to happen. Okay. Next slide. So what can you do? Don't overreact by blaming your child. A lot of times, the victim will be blamed. You say, "Well, what did you do?" And say, "I did nothing." Well, you had to do something to get bullied. So that's not always true. If they are being bullied, be supportive and understanding. Find out how long the bullying has been going on and ensure that you will work together to find a solution. Let your children know they are not to blame for being bullied. And like I said, a lot of children, even adults, they blame themselves as victims. Usually it's not their fault. Uh, next slide. So reporting procedures. Report the incident immediately. Email anti-bullying specialist or principal. So that would be me or Ms. Hector. We have an HIV coordinator back, Ms. Moscone. Um, and then also we have Mr. Ocekic, and also the principal. So all of us are resources that you can email um, if you think you're trying to tackle this alone. So please do not hesitate to contact us, and we'll take the appropriate steps and measures. So your student may report verbally to any school staff member. So it can just be verbal. We'll do it at the start. The investigation, you'll be notified, and we'll just go to the procedure. Okay, so don't think that you're alone. Always try to bring school people, I mean, school staff, administrators as a resource. We are more than glad to try to assist you and try to get this investigation underway. Okay? Next slide. So, investigation procedure. The principal must initiate investigation within two school days of receiving a report. Investigation must be conducted by anti-bullying inspection. Must be completed within 10 days, 10 school days from date of the written report. Must give a report to the principal with two school days of complete investigation. May a man report if additional information or, I mean, if additional informant, which is a witness, um, becomes available. Uh, next slide. So results of the investigation. School leadership must decide action to take, intervention, training, impose discipline or accounting, and must report it to the board at the next board meeting following completion of the investigation. Next slide. So school leadership, like I said, our anti-bullying coordinator is Ms. Tashma Stone. She's in the back of the slide for us. Anti-bullying specialists, inspector, elementary, myself, other school, which is 6 to 12. There's our email addresses. Um, for a span of four days, a group of middle school students has posted a series of memes on Instagram comparing Kevin, a seventh grade student with various cartoon characters with large ears. Over the course of four days, 20 kids have commented or liked the memes on Instagram. This has caused Kevin a great deal of distress and he has verbalized to his parents that he does not feel comfortable coming to school anymore. So, would this be bullying or not bullying? Bullying. Exactly, that was bullying. Slide, bullying. Okay, so, it is Friday, outside during lunch, and recess, 
and some of the students have decided to take advantage of playing two-hand touch football in the middle section of the playground. While the game is being played, I was pushing Rosie instead of the regular two-handed touch protocol in order to be tired. Rosie becomes extremely angry over his push and jumps a right away and pushes out of back, causing her to fall to the ground. The two students continue to be involved in a few seconds of arguing back and forth when the teacher comes over and asks what happened. Is this bullying or not bullying? Exactly. I'm not bullying is conflict. So, but these you can see the differences between bullying and conflict. Um, so I need some resources um, that you can go on and do some research and get some more clarification um, if you think that you would be helpful. Um, so please ask the last slide. So please ask the last slide. Um, if you have any questions for the receptor. Try to let, try to ask me. If not, just go through the back. You can answer something. I'm sure we could. So, if anybody has any questions, can you go back to the slide and put the contacts out there? For Which one? Oh, the contacts. contacts. The last part. Uh, Stopbullying.org is it also? And my extension is 1201 for the elementary. That's best to send an email. And mine is 1302. But when it comes to that, email will be more efficient because it's trackable. So if you have a complaint about anti like HIV, send an email first, then we'll try to communicate to you over the phone. Okay? Um, any other questions? Um, I have a question on this process. I don't know if you know. The fingerprints? Yeah. So I did the fingerprints, but when I filled out this application online, I picked the wrong button. Back to do it over again. Okay. Um, um, probably not the only one who's done it. So yeah, I called sure. him. Okay. I did the same thing, and I called him, and he told me after I got fingerprinted to just call him back and he would fix it. Fix it. Okay. So fix just call. There's one. It's a guy, and he picks up. He's very nice. So there's one phone number. I think I have that. Can I actually pick an idea of something? On there? Yeah. I have one. I can call you. I can call you. I can call you. Sure. Yeah, so it's going to be number two. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I, 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 I,